sometimes with the only idea of uh, sinking it. The boat itself is uh, 330 feet uh, long. You can see we are attached to this buoy here, not where the boat is thrown. This is the stern. And right behind us, you can see the bow of the boat, like the white buoy here. So it's uh, a fairly long vessel. And it was in a, a submarine destroyer, but also has uh, guns. Uh, Welcome to one of the most famous shipwrecks in the Caribbean, the MV Captain Keith Tibbets. Now this is one of the most famous wrecks in the Caribbean, it is an old Russian Navy vessel. In September 1996, a Russian military frigate known as Russian Destroyer 356 was sunk in Cayman Brac to make an artificial reef. Now this ship was built in 1984 by the Russian Navy and given to the Cuban Navy. The Cubans with no use for the vessel and having seen the vessel see no action, it was sold to the Cayman Islands in mid-1990s for the express purpose of sinking for tourism. Later renamed the MV Captain Keith Tibbets or the Captain Keith, it has since become one of the most loved dive sites in Cayman Brac. For many Americans, the wreck is the ultimate symbol of capitalism triumphing over the Soviet Union. But that's just a perspective. The reality is, this is an awesome wreck to dive. We're here with Kid Sea Camp for another amazing week, this time at the Cayman Brack Beach Resort for an awesome week of diving. And in this series, we're going to be exploring the beautiful dive sites of the Cayman Islands, specifically Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. As you see, me cruising above the wreck at the guns waving at Holly. And as we start making our way from the bow to the stern, you can see the state of the wreck. The wreck, as I said, was sunk in 1996. So, you know, it's been down for a very long time now, over 20 years, and it's just coralized. There's so much marine life, there's so many cool things to see, and we're having an awesome time going around and exploring it. And as we're making our way from bow, the bow, we see the big gun at the front which is really cool to see how that's sitting there. But the wreck, originally when it did sink, it was sunk lying flat. Now in 2004, a big hurricane came through and ripped the wreck in two. And you'll see a lot of destruction in the center of the ship now coming up soon, resulting from this big hurricane, which makes it feel like a real proper wreck now. Now, the wreck was sunk for divers, but as you can see, it wasn't completely cleaned out for divers like our usual artificial wrecks. You know, with cut out like a Swiss cheese, with exits everywhere and all the oil and the cables and everything moved. Now there's a lot of cables still hanging in this wreck, so penetration is almost non-existent or not really recommended due to the entanglement hazards. And you can see, as I said, from 2004, the hurricane that ripped the centre part out. You can see the carnage of it absolutely torn. It makes it look like it was actually struck during a war with like an airplane bombing it and taking it down as the destruction we saw in our Egyptian video from the Seven Day War, which you can just check out here. Now, we were looking and see if there was actually any penetration options, me and Holly, and you could see with all the cables hanging down, the wreck kind of a bit in disrepair from the hurricane damage over the years, you could just see there was no safe entry point and no real safe area to penetrate inside the wreck. So, we decided to head back out and then head to the stern of the wreck. And boy, were we not disappointed. We come up and I see Beth looking up at something. And what does she spot? She spotted a screen sea turtle, cruising up on the side of the wreck, heading to go get a breath. Look at the way it's cruising up. And this is something. Like right now we're about 20 metres, 25 metres and we're looking up and you can see the surface clear as day. Visibility and the crystal blue waters makes this dive awesome. This shipwreck is 330 feet long, which is huge when you really consider that. 
And what I loved was these bar jacks, how playful there was. In the midship, there's all these grates and there's so much marine life on it. They were so playful checking it out and playing around. And that's what I really liked was just sitting in these grates and just seeing what marine life would come in. Even when we get close to the staring garden right next to the grates, great barracuda. You can see one cruising down and one in the background as well. There was so much marine life on this wreck and I really like how they kept the guns on this ship. A lot of ships when they sink them artificially, they remove the guns because it can cause a hazard when they sink it to result in the ship tipping over and listing. But they decided to keep it in this wreck which gives that real authentic feel. And the stern guard is a great opportunity for some stunning photos. As Todd drops down on it, but we've got some awesome photos which you guys can check out on our Facebook from the Cayman Brack week. We've got some awesome photos of people at this at the stern gun. Now as we continue to move around this dive site, you can see the sergeant majors, the Creelo Ras, the fairy bassets, bar jacks, barracuda, everywhere. You can see another ob observation and a gun sitting in the water as well that's fallen off in the sand. There's just so much to see and explore. But the wreck is between two coral heads. So we have a coral reef just here, just off the port side of the wreck. And there's loads of life on it. There's more eels and me getting my photos in of Holly. As you can see, she's like, you guys are crazy. What are you up to? I was photographer for the week and here's a shot of some of the photos you can see from the other side of what I took of Holly coming up in just a sec. But as we move through, you can see there's parrotfish, there's snappers, again, me taking more photos. And what I really liked was if you looked into the sand, you would then find green sea turtles. You'd also find stingrays. Now there's a lot of stingrays in the sand here, but unfortunately every time we got too close to them, they swam away. And right round the corner here, as we're heading across to this little coral, coral bomby, where the wall or the sand just drops off down sloping beyond 30 meters, there's a cool little swim through. And when you come through the swim through, you get me again with the camera, snapping shots of everyone coming through the swim through. Yeah, I must have been annoying feet taking photos of everyone, but that was my job this whole summer, was as a photographer. And then we continue to move back and there's just more barracuda on the water column. And what I love, the sun ball coming behind the barracuda, it just gives these awesome shots. Now we did about three to four dives on this wreck during the week. And honestly, it was worth it. I loved diving this wreck. It was probably one of my favorite dives in Cayman Brack. There was so much life on it. There was two reef structures nearby as Danny is giving me the Royal Wave coming past. And what I liked about it was if you just wanted to just jump on the wreck and then go explore the reef and go lionfish hunting, there's that option. And I loved coming back from the reef, the starboard side reef, coming back onto the wreck because it really gave you that eerie feel of a proper shipwreck. Proper like you were diving like a World War II shipwreck or something, or even a Cold War era shipwreck, which this was. You know, as if this ship had been in battle and seeing it. It was so cool to dive. I would highly recommend diving the Keith Tibbetts shipwreck in Cayman Brack. But as always guys, Thank you so much for staying around and exploring this incredible dive site with us. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to not miss the next venture and our next dive. It helps us out a lot and it's free for you guys to do. And always guys, see you in the next dive. Ha 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 ha!